Hi, my name is Warner and I'll be your chemistry tutor for this problem. Let's start off by reading the problem. We have to create a certain buffer that has a pH of exactly 3.75. We have a 50 milliliter sample of a buffer solution that must be able to withstand the addition of 25 milliliter milliliters of a 0.1 molarity of NaOH. Buffer solution will break after no more than 35 uh, milliliters of the molarity of sodium hydroxide. So this is basically telling us that it's gonna reach a certain equivalence point after the addition of 35 milliliters. So we're given that uh, sodium hydroxide has 0.1 molarity and acetic acid has six molarity. So it's good to visualize what's going on here. So we have a certain amount of NaOH and we have a six molarity of HAC, which is given that we have 50 milliliters. So we have to add enough um, NaOH in order to um, increase the the pH overall of the of the acetic acid. However, based on the certain molarity that we have here, it's quite high. So we have to reduce it at some point later on, because the because on the concentration that acetic acid has right now, we're going to be adding more than the restriction that we have. And basically, the restriction is. It has to be less than 25 milliliters of um, the sodium hydroxide that we're going to add. So let's write down a reaction. So there's going to be a certain acid dissociation here. After the addition of the hydroxide to the acetic acid, which is going to form a conjugate base of acetic acid, which is AC minus, plus water. So there is a neat equation. The Henderson Hasselbalch equation. So it relates that it relates the moles of um, the conjugate base to the acid plus pK. So we're at a point where it's going to be before it reaches equivalence point. So we can expect that the AC is going to be still less than the the amount of um, HAC needed. So we take we subtract the pK pH and we exponentiate to base 10 in order to, to cancel out the logs. We're at this point right now. So the pH we want is 3.75. And we already know the K for, H for HAC, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. We can look up online or it could be given. So we negative log it. We find that it's 4.74. So we, we subtract 3.75 with, with 4.74 um, all to the power of 10. Set it equal to the, the fraction of the conjugate base to the acid, and we get that it's going to be 0 0.1023. So why is this number important? So when we're looking at, at this equation, we realize that a certain, certain hydroxide amount is going to be exhausted. where it's going to result in a form of um, decrease in pH of the acetic acid in the solution overall. And it's going to increase the amount of anion here, which thus is going to um, decrease the pH to, towards that of a basic solution. So based on the restrictions, we must calculate the amount of moles that we're moles of base that we're going to add to the acetic acid. So we start off by, by, by using the restriction, which is it can be no more than 25 milliliters. So we multiply 25 milliliters times the concentration of the base, and we see that 2.5 millimoles of hydroxide needs to be added. We also have to um, uh, be aware that of what is exactly the moles of acid. We really don't know right now, and we're trying to solve that because we want to reduce or dilute the acid to a certain um, molarity that allows us to um, be within the restriction. So we're trying to find what the moles of acid is. So using a nice table, we, we set the initial amount of HAC as X, 2.5 millimoles of hydroxide that are going to be added to the acid. And there's not gonna be um, any conjugate base present in the initially. So all of the millimoles of um, hydroxide are going to be exhausted. And 
in, in at equilibrium, the anion is going to have a certain concentration, while the concentration of HAC is going to be um, reduced. So now we created a buffer since there is a conjugate base um, and the acetic acid present at equilibrium. So we use these, these numbers and we form a fraction here. The fraction of the conjugate base of the acetic acid set it equal to um, what we found earlier from our, from our manipulations of the, of the henderson hasselbach equation. So we try to solve what X is, or the initial amount of acid needed. So we realize that there's going to be 26.94 millimoles of acid before the base was added. So as the student suggested, he wanted to form um, a one uh, molarity of acetic acid. And that's quite neat because it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio at this point. So we use um, Boyle's Law to find the concentration of um, HAC. So if it's set to one molarity, it's just going to be the, the molarity initially times the volume. So the final volume of, of the HAC that's going to be needed to dilute it to one molarity is going to be 600. So from the 600 milliliters of the one, of the one molarity of the HAC, we're going to take 26.94 milliliters of the uh, di diluted um, 1.0 molarity of HAC. So we start initially at 50 milliliters of 6 molarity, and we're going to add enough water where it reaches the 600 mark. And that's going to be important in the procedure wise. So one of the pro one of the things that's the most important here is the student wants to write a procedure for creating a buffer. So let's go over that and it summarizes what we did earlier. So part of the procedure is that we have to prevent breakage of the six molarity of, of the aqueous solution. So we must dilute the six molarity of the acetic acid to one molarity. So we first obtain a thousand milliliter beaker, right? And we add the the fifty the fifty milliliters of the six the six molarity of, of, of the acetic acid. And we, eno we add enough water where it reaches a 600 mark. That's how we know that the whole entire solution is going to be one. Using a 10 milliliter pipette, we add, we add um, 26.94 milliliters of the one molarity of HAC to a conical flask, which we have here. So now we add one to three, three drops of methyl orange. So basically, basically, methyl orange is an indicator. So once it reaches a certain pH range of, um, I believe, 3.1 to 4.2, the color is going to change in the solution. And we want the final solution to be exactly 3.75. And that's within the range of the indicator. So that's going to be important. So we set up a ring stand where a burette, burette clamp is going to be attached, which is basically this. Um, then we attach a 50 milliliter burette to the clamp. We check that the stop clock, stop clock is going to be um, perpendicular, no, parallel to the table in order, in order to prevent any form of leakage once we add the NaOH to the burette. Um, we place the conical flask that has the acid underneath the burette. Using a volumetric flask, we add the, the 35 milliliters of the 0.1 molarity to the burette. Um, we record the initial burette reading. Um, someone needs to pay attention um, to the marks on the burette because we have to we have to um, be accurate in adding the 26.94 milliliters of the one molarity of NaOH. So we we rotate the the stop clock in a on a clockwise motion so that drops of the NaOH are going to be going slowly to inside the conical flask. So once we, once we um, read that 26.94 milliliters of the 0.1 molarity of NaOH has been added, we put, it in a, we put the stop clock in a parallel to the, to the lab table so we can ensure that no more NaOH is going to be dropped into the conical flask. So by the end, we, we should see some form of color change inside the conical flask.
because it's going to be within the pH range of at least 3.75. So that's the procedure and how to create a buffer. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. See you later. Thank you.